Hello everyone, I'm Evie Too Easy here with a third and hopefully final guide to installing Monster Madness Battle for Suburbia on PC. This video acts as a full comprehensive guide for everything you need to know and do to get this game running however you like. Every step will have chapters, but there will be five main sections to this video, which are as follows. Section 1 will be basic installation, which is just getting the game running in the first place. Section 2 will be all about the multiplayer, which will include getting a DLC map, getting the VPN required to play, and how to connect to or host games. Section 3 will be using a community-made patch to heavily improve quality of life, fix some game-breaking issues, and make the game feel more like the Xbox version's official patch. Section 4 will be other miscellaneous things, most notably including how to get controller input working, how to use console commands, how to use in-game cheat codes, etc. Section 5 will be purely fixes and troubleshooting, notably how to fix your game not saving, and how to fix black textures. If you need further tech support, want to ask questions, or just want to join the biggest home for all things Monster Madness, then join the Monster Madness Discord down below. All links, websites, or things I talk about will be in the description. Let's get this tutorial started. Starting off, you will need to go to the website where we'll be getting the game and some fixes, which will be my Abandonware. Once you're here, you need to download NVIDIA PhysX Legacy Drivers if you already don't have them. This is the game's physics engine, and even if you have other video cards, you need to get this. Once you have that downloaded, you will also need a program in to extract folders. This can be either 7-zip or WinRAR. Once you have that, scroll down, past the comments, and you will see Download Monster Madness Battle for Suburbia. The link you want to click is the middle one, ISO version of original DVD 3.8GB. Click download and get this. And while that's downloading, scroll down and get the no CD fix. You don't need these three other things, just no CD. This is needed to get the game running as without it, the game checks for the physical disc. This fools the game to make them think you have it when you don't really. Now to actually start, go to the ISO you downloaded and double click it. This will now open in a thing we will call the virtual drive from now on. And here, all you need to worry about is setup.exe at the bottom. Just double click this. Click OK, and around this time you will likely be prompted to download Microsoft.net. If you don't already have the version needed, then it will ask you, so just download it. Click Next, accept the agreement, click Next, and do a standard install. Next, and install. Now you wait. Once it's finished installing, click Finish. And now go to the main directory. You can do this by opening your C drive, going to Program File Signs 86, Artificial Studios, Monster Madness, and here we are. Now since some time has passed since my last PC install video, we found that most of the file copying from the last video was not actually necessary. You only need to copy two things to get the game running. First we'll be going to the virtual drive, clicking Movies, Control C, then go to the main directory, and Control V. Replace Files, and give Administrator Agreement. The second copy will be getting the NoCD in. Extract NoCD and open it. Then go to Crack, Hatred, and everything here, Copy all of it, Control c go to Binaries, and Control v replace files and destination, and give agreement. And that is it. All we need to do now is do our settings. You can do this by clicking Monster Launcher, right-clicking it, then running it as administrator. And here we are at the settings. You can do these however you like, of course, but the one thing I recommend is to not run the game in full screen. This is because when full screen, the game has a big tendency to freeze so bad you have to turn off your computer to get control back. This does not happen at all in windowed mode, and this also makes alt-tabbing the game a lot easier. Do note this is also the only time you can run this settings window without reinstalling the game or messing with some files, so make sure you get everything done here. After you're done doing your key bindings, press apply, then ok. After you're done doing your main settings, press apply, then just close this window. And now, you can either open Monster Launcher, or start game.command to run the game. The only difference is that start game.command will use default graphics settings, and if you changed any, then Monster Launcher will use the settings you chose. Then we can run the game, and we can see, it's running just fine. We can even load into a level, and as we can see, the game is running fine. Now if you just wanted to get the game running, then that is all you need to do but I recommend you stick around for a little longer to fix a stutter that happens over the course of the entire game and can feel very nauseating. Now this stutter is caused by something called human interface. To fix this, we need to open our device manager, click on the drop down for human interface devices, and here we will see a ton of things here. 
The only ones you need to worry about are the ones that end in Control Device or Define Device. To fix the stutter, you need to right click and disable all of these. I already have them disabled, but for me, this would be disabling these three control devices, then these four defined devices. Once you have that done upon next launch of the game, or maybe a PC restart, your game will not have the stutter anymore. As for leaving these off, you don't need to worry. I've had these off for a long time and I have not run into any problems. Now this next section will be all about the multiplayer. This will be getting a DLC map, getting the VPN required to play, and hosting or connecting to games. But to start, we're gonna get that DLC map. In the description of this video, I've linked a Google Drive download, which has the map. Simply download this, then extract it. Once it's extracted, open Zach's house, Monster Madness, and then you will find this. Simply select all of these, Control C, go to your main directory, and Control V. Accept the replacement, give agreement, continue, and then wait for the game to be copied. Once it's copied in, we can open binaries and run the game. To check if it's working, we can go to internet, start server, and then if we see Zach's house here, we know we got it working. We can even start the game to see if it's working properly. And as we can see, the game is running just fine. Now that we have that map, we can get the VPN now. For many old games that require direct IP connection, they will often use gaming VPNs like Hamachi, but the Monster Madness community will use Radmin VPN. So go to their website and download it. Once you have it downloaded and open, you can click Join Network, Gaming Network, and then Monster Madness. And you will see Monster Madness Battle for Suburbia. Click this, then join. And then you will see everyone online on the network. To connect to a host, another person needs to click on internet, in game, then click start server. When you've confirmed their server is up, you need to go to Radman and type in their IP. In our example, Kissing Lungs will be hosting, so we need to type in Kissing Lungs IP. When you have their IP typed in, click connect. And as you can see here, we have connected. To host, all you need to do is click Start Server at the top. When people know that your server is up, they can type in your IP to join you, and you can just play the game. And as you can see here, the person is connected to us. Section 3 is all about a community-made patch simply called the Community Patch, and this is what old guys were missing the most, the lack of mentioning this patch. This patch seeks to improve quality of life, includes several fixes some of the most game-breaking bugs, and balances the game in the same way the Xbox version's official patch did. I would also like to mention now, I am not the one who made this patch. I'm just guiding you on how to download it. This is made by one modder, and any questions you may have can be asked in the Discord server. The process to getting this patch is pretty simple, so let's get started. First, you need to download the latest TFC installer from Nexus Mods. This is needed to put the patches in, and will require a Nexus account. Once you have the TFC installer extracted, open it, TFC installer, find tfc.exe, and make sure to run this as administrator or else it won't work. Now click the first option, game folder, and find Monster Madness. And now we need to actually get the community patch. In the description, I've linked the most recent updated community patch available, version 4.1. Download this. Once you have it downloaded, click mod folder and find it. Once you found it, click Community patch, 4.0 patch, 4.0 patch again, Monster Madness, and then you should see a My Mod folder. Click this, then select folder. Then this button will light up and say Update Monster Madness. Click this. Next time you launch the game, you will be patched. To find out exactly what the patch does, I've included a README in the folder. This patch will also automatically give you Zach's house and includes a .bat file for turning off human interface devices. And if you ever want to uninstall the patch, then open TFC Installer as admin and click Uninstall All. And then you are now playing Vanilla Monster Madness again. It's also important to note this patch is actively updated. The one I link may become outdated in the future. If this is the case, any future patches can be found in the Discord server. Section 4 will solely focus on quality of life things to make the game more enjoyable. The first and most important one will be how to get controller input working. First, you need to go to Steam and go to your library. At the bottom left, you will see Add a Game. Click this, then click Add a non-Steam game. Now click Browse and find Monster Madness. Go to Binaries, then click Monster Game, Open. Then click Monster Launcher, Open. Then click Add Selected Programs. Now, right-click Monster Launcher, go to Properties, Controller, and then where it says Use Default Settings, click Enable Steam Input. And on your next launch of the game, your controller will be working. 
And as you can hear, my controller is working perfectly fine. It has the same inputs as the Xbox version, except that clicking down the left stick will dodge and clicking the right stick will jump. Next, we're gonna talk about how to get the developer console. First, press Windows and R at the same time, then type in this file string. I'll leave the copy paste for that in the description. Click OK. Then you'll see a ton of INI files. Find monster input.ini. Right click this, then go to open with, and click notepad. Then you will see a ton of coding things. Scroll all the way to the bottom, and where it says B enable console in final release equals false, delete the false and type in true. Now click X, save, and then open Monster Madness. And now by pressing the tilde key, it will open the developer console. This console has a ton of commands that have not been found yet, and new ones are always being found. But to give you some quick commands that are useful, Here's a few. First, God will make you invincible, of course, and give you this unique developer-only Got Hand of God weapon, which heavily increases your movement speed and will just kill anything on the map, even bosses. And if you finish the level, you get to keep Hand of God, regardless of if you're using any commands. For the second one, Ghost will turn on no clip. Here, there's supposed to be an invisible wall there, but using Ghost, I was able to go through it. And to turn off no clip, do walk. Make sure you don't get stuck like I do. Deck out will give you every weapon and item in the game, including Hand of God. I already have every item and weapon, but it will give you them regardless. Set jump Z, and a number can be anywhere from 1 to 99999 or something, will set your jump height to whatever you put. So since I put a ton of 9s, yeah. Skip to next checkpoint will automatically give you the next checkpoint, and respawn you there. There's tons of more commands that I just don't have time to go over in this video, but there is a list of all of the ones that have been found so far on the Monster Madness Discord's documentation channel. To use in-game cheat codes, this will also require the developer console, which we just talked about how to get. To use cheats, open console, then type enable release cheat then whatever cheat you want. It does not need to be case sensitive. A comprehensive list of all of the cheats in the game and what they do can be found on the Monster Madness Discord's documentation channel. Here's a quick one. Morgy the Mole will make the game first person. If you just want to fully skip the progression, and frankly I don't blame you, you can use someone else's save file. It's not just a drag and drop process, however. To start, press Windows plus R and type percent app data percent. Click OK, then go to Artificial Studios, Monster Madness, and you will see a few files here. This is where your game saves. The only one that matters is the MMP file. Remember what the file is called, then right click and delete it. In the description, I've linked the same save file which is included in the community patch. Download this, put the save file you just downloaded in there, then rename it to whatever the name of the old save file you just deleted was. Then on the next launch of the game, you will have this save file's progress. This game is riddled with bugs and glitches, and this even affects the game after you have it set up and running. This section will tell you how to fix two of the most common bugs out there. This is a bad one, as for some people the game just won't straight up won't save. This is because the folders required for the game to save don't exist yet. To make them, press Windows plus R and type percent app data percent. Once you're here, create an artificial studios folder, then open this and create a monster madness folder. Make sure the A in Artificial is capitalized, the S in Studios is capitalized, then in the next folder, make sure the M in Monster is capitalized, and the M in Madness is capitalized, with no spaces in between. The next launch of the game, your game should start saving here properly. For some people, the textures in the game may be black or heavily darkened. This can be solved by going back to the ISO you downloaded and just mount it, which is just double-clicking the ISO. Then on your next launch of the game, this should be fixed. This will also extend to some problems like performance and other things. Well that will be all for this guide. I hope this guide got you everything you wanted out of the PC version and I really hope you enjoy the game. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more Monster Madness content and live streams. Have a good day.